And um, it's my great pleasure and honor to introduce Ronald Schneider. And Ronald has been working with Amsterdam University Press. And Amsterdam University Press was one of the first open access monograph publishers. And uh, uh, he's responsible for digital publications. And uh, he, uh, since uh, 2011, he's been working as coordinator of OEPEN. And it's a large project. It, it started as a project funded by European Commission, Open Access Book Publishing Project. Now it's uh, been funded by National Science Foundation in the Netherlands. And that's a project that uh, recently released Director of Open Access Books. Like we all knew about Director of Open Access Journals, Director of Open Access Repositories. And recently, Director of Open Access Books has been released with over 1,000 uh, high quality peer reviewed full text books uh, from almost 30 publishers. And the floor is yours, Ronald. Well, thank you. You've actually told a lot of the stuff I'm going to tell, so that saves time for everybody. <laughs> okay, well, well, uh, first of all, thank you for... It is on. Maybe I should just shout a little harder. Well, I'm too tall. Okay, is this better? Yeah. Well, um, thank you everyone for um, uh, f uh, making me um, one of your speakers. I'm trying to... I will tell you something about OAPEN, about uh, academic book publishing from, from, where, I, from where I stand, and um, the problems and the solutions we have uh, used in OAPEN. Um, first of all, I'm going to introduce myself a little bit for those who, you, uh, who do not know me. Then I'm going to talk a little bit about monographs and the monographs crisis. And then I will have a solution, well, part of a solution at least, which is the Open Library. And of course the directory of Open Access Books. Um, Irina already told me a little bit about me. I have um, two jobs. I work at Amsterdam University Press, where I am responsible for making, uh, for helping create digital publications. And furthermore, I'm the technical coordinator of the Open Library. Um, a part of that, uh, it's not only the, the technical part, but it's, um, um, one of the things we do at the Open is a pilot project on the effects on open access publishing uh, on monographs, and I do also part of the research. All right, monographs. Um, the monographs is monographs are having a tough time. They are um, having lots of declining sales. When you look at the figures of the of the 70s, you see the um, libraries purchased about 1,500. Um, titles, uh, 1,500 books. Nowadays, um, 200 to 300 of those books are sold. Um, you can. This is also reflected in the, in the print runs. In back in the 70s, when I wasn't actually involved in any of this, um, print runs were quite high. Uh, and when you see now, most of them are under uh, 500, and actually. Three, three quarters of them are uh, less than um, 750 uh, pieces, which is actually quite slow. And I think, well, we, that is part of, that is, well, not, not part of, that's because of the serials crisis. Here we have a um, wonderful graph. This is the expansion, uh, the, exp um, the money spent on serials by ARL, and well, basically, it goes through the roof. And when we compare it to monographs, the picture is not so funny. Um, actually, the last line below here shows that in this period, there are even less monographs um, sold or bonds than at starting point. So. Yes, we could say that monographs are really struggling. 
uh, Oepen was thought of as a possible solution for that. Um, the goal of Oepen is to develop an, an open access business model um, to create and build a network uh, of publishers and other stakeholders regarding open access monographs and to aggregate a collection of books. In 2008 it started as an EU funded project and in 2011 it became um, the OAPEN Foundation. It's still uh, being funded by, um, well it's, it's now being funded by um, the national, the Dutch National Science Fund. Um, what, what, we, what did we achieve in those years? Well, we have worked on a model for academic books, uh, which is basically we're very, well, one of the things we were looking at was a business model. And actually what we did find is that we could not find a sustainable business model without uh, subsidies. So if you want to publish monographs, then in open access, then there still needs to be some um, some money from from outside sources. Um, what we did succeed in is involving a lot of stakeholders all across Europe, and actually even beyond that. Um, one of the things that I really am proud of, because I'm very much into working on it, is the Open platform, or basically the Open library, where we have uh, more than 30 publishers and um, we have several tools and services um, connected to it. Well, I'm very proud of that. I'll show you a little bit more about it. And there's further acti activities. There's pilot projects to um, test and um, develop models in, well, basically in the, U in the UK and in the Netherlands. Uh, but there's also work on the Scandinavian countries, but it's still in an um, early phase. And of course, the foundation itself uh, gives us a platform to promote open access publishing of monographs. Well, this is how the open library looks like. It's, it's, it looks a bit crowded, I'm sorry about that. But we had a lot, a lot of things to show, a lot of things to tell. Of course, there's always features, titles, the things that we, fe we, we feel that you should look at. Um, we, do, we do use Twitter quite extensively, and so you can find it here. And of course, there's all kinds of ways to, um, well, basically to browse uh, the library. We, we, we really like to um, enable what's so nicely called serendipity, searching for one thing and finding another useful thing. And of course, it's, there's also the Google-like um, search bar. Um, well, a little bit about the uh, Wapen library, about our collection. Um, one of the thing, well, all books are uh, in open access, but we, they do have several licenses. Some of them are um, only free to read, and some of them um, go a bit further, they are free to share. Th this really depends on, um, well, basically the choice of the publisher. Um, the main thing about the Wapen Library is that we think quality assurance is, is very important, so all books in the Wapen Library must be peer-reviewed. Um, what I did tell you about, we do have several uh, ways to, to search and browse the, the content. Um, we also installed a multilingual search um, option. And um, of course there's um, the connection with social media. You can put it on, on Google+, Plus. you can put it on Facebook, you can put it on Twitter, every book you find. And um, for the more, let's say, serious users, you can also export the citations into your um, um, programs like EndNote, etc. And we do not think as a weapon as something that should be standing alone. It should be connected. So we'd like to be part of, of several other networks. So we're working on or being connected to uh, WorldCat, uh, 
Doab, the directory of open access books, which I will be of which I will be speaking a little bit further. And we've also worked on integration, integration with academic libraries by making our uh, metadata in MARC format uh, available under a CC0 license. So basically there's nothing to stop you to go wild with our library. But also we work with aggregators and we did some work um, to be more, let's say, useful to search engines. I've I think I, yeah, well, this is one of those nice complicated pictures where you think, what the heck were they thinking about? But um, I tried to put everything that we can do with, with a weapon in one, in one picture. Mm -hmm. So basically here we have the contents from several publishers which are put into the open, in our, into our open access library which then is exported uh, to all, all, all other kinds of things and there's also the connection to aggregators and to WorldCat. So we'd like to be not a silo but a connected thing. Or this is a, a bit easier picture to, to look at. The integration, we, we, we did it on three levels with the, the level of the data aggreg aggregators, the level of academic libraries and the level of search engines. And um, first of all, search engines, which is actually a bit hard. Um, search engines or search engine optimization is um, complicated because search engines do, do not, especially in our case, because our contents is mostly PDFs and PDFs are indexed not very well by Google. We did do some technical measures to, to to make it better. But I personally, I think that the other two things we do are much more successful. Um, we, we work with data aggregators, so they use our metadata to make our books available to their customers. And of course, we try to connect directly to academic libraries by enabling, um, well, several ways to, to, to upload or use our metadata. And of course, as you can see, there are some, already some uh, libraries who use this information. And um, I'm really trying to sell you, I guess. <laughs> if you really, uh, it's, it's, it's very easy, there's a tab metadata and there. Click on one of those feeds and you are connected for life. Um, the question is, of course, is all this work a bit, little bit successful? Um, Yes, I think we do. I think the trend is, is upwards, um, especially the orange bar, that's the, the number of books that are downloaded um, in a month. And you see there is an there is a upward trend and the amount of users is also, uh, world, um, it's not only rising, but it's also worldwide. I think I, uh, once in a report I wrote that we have people coming from Armenia to Zimbabwe, to our library. And of course some numbers. Um, so we had almost in the last, well, 13 months, we all, almost had 400,000 downloaded books, which is, well, at least I think is a, quite a successful one. And what is interesting is that um, most visitors take more, take more, download more than one book. So it is uh, something that people either they return or they think, oh, this is nice and this is nice. And there we have the serendipity again, finding something useful when you, wasn't, when you weren't expecting it. Um, then one of th our latest projects, or actually our latest project, I should say, is the directory of open access books. Um, this is how it looks like, a uh, not so crowded as the OAPEN library. Um, all the URLs are at the end of my presentation, so. Um, well, it's, it's a new service. Actually, it's, it's still in beta, so we're still working on it. But the directory of open access books is planned as a um, their, um, discovery service for, for, again, for peer-reviewed open access monographs. 
um, in, uh, where it open the open foundation takes care of of entering the the metadata and and all um, other housekeeping things here we have a platform which is a bit more lightweight and publishers um, themselves can maintain uh, and upload of course new ones and uh, their their metadata the the full text of the books is not in the way where in doap but it is, is on the open library or it is at the site of the publisher itself well we launched uh, uh, last april and we have now uh, almost 1100 monographs by 27 different publishers so at, the, at least we have a nice uptake another one of those pictures just to give you a bit of an um, of an example um, you see on, on the left the open library as one of the larger um, sources for DOAP, but there's also other publishers who directly, um, let's say, connect to the directory of open access books. Again, it's I'm, I tend to repeat myself. I'm sorry about that, but again, we we we, we work on integration. We were. Of course, DOAP is heavily integrated with uh, Waben. It doesn't come as a surprise, but again, we, we, we integrate, we want to integrate or working on integration with academic libraries and again with data aggregators, because we feel that um, although our services are on our own quite, quite useful, uh, we, should, we should be part of a network, not another thing that you can go to. Um, actually, one of the f there was quite some questions about what is the difference between DOAP and um, the Open Library. Well, the, the main um, difference is here. Within the Open Library, we store the full text of a book. Within DOAP, we only store the metadata. Um, which enables users of the open library to search the full content of the book within doop you can only search the metadata um, the other thing that is different and that's an important difference is the license um, although I, I really would like to have all books in the open library to be um, under a creative commons or uh, such like license that was not always possible so, books in the open library are either free to read, where you can download it for personal use, but you cannot uh, put it on other websites, or books that are under a form of Creative Commons license or such like, and they are free to share. All the books are better, better said, all books description, descriptions in the directory of open access books, they're all free to share. And of course, there's a um, well, more of a detail, the searching with uh, OAPEN is based on the BIC classification, while um, DOAP uses the Library of Congress. Again, I was, I'm starting to repeat myself. Uh, we, again, integration by uh, using MARC under a CC0 license, so you can do basically everything with it, um, and by working with data aggregators. So, to conclude, um, we did see that paper monographs are, are struggling. Um, we think that a part of the solution could be to enable open access publishing, uh, one of the things we, we do know is that high availability leads to higher usage, which should lead to higher impact. Um, and the OAPEN Foundation supports this by, um, first of all, by quality assurance, by making sure that everything that we um, host or we make available is, um, let's say, well, which is good by not being an island or a silo, but by connecting to others. And most of all, 
by working together. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Ronald. I think we have time for one question, and then perhaps we'll have more time for more questions. Please, Marika. I'm afraid you'll have to use. Uh, I have a question on quality assurance. Are these publishers that are themselves uh, responsible for uh, quality, or is uh, Blue Wave also having some kind of international peer review? Which books are? Uh, no, a weapon doesn't do the peer review itself, if you mean that. No, but um, the, each publisher must give an account on how they use, uh, what, what kind of quality assurance they use about peer review, etc. And um, of course, we work together with OSPA, so basically, if those, if the, 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 the peer review set up by the, a certain publisher, follows the, um, those rules, then we think, then we know it's, it has the, well, at least the right quality. And there was another question, uh, what if a publisher in Armenia or in Georgia would like to cooperate with, uh, for example, director of open access books? What's, how, how they should approach you, or what they should submit? Um, well, they could, could approach me, but uh, a bit easier is to, uh, on the director of open access books, there is a um, form that you can use for where publishers can, can enter, well, basically they're the, 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 the basic things, and then we can get in contact, and if everything uh, works as it should, then we can uh, go ahead and uh, do, do, and make some nice things. Thanks a lot, Ronald. Uh, I suggest that we stop for now with Ronald, and perhaps we'll have more time.